The would-be Empire of Rome is snuffed out in its infancy by the greater Mediterranean powers of Carthage and Macedonia during the Roman Punic Wars. Rome is left as little more than a rump state in the north of Italy, left without the resources or manpower to expand beyond the Alps and into northern lands. The lands that would become Rome's empire see domination by the trade empire of Carthage in the west and the military empire of Macedonia in the east, the latter of whom would stand as the strongest of three rival Greek kingdoms, Macedonia, Egypt, and the Seleucids. Rome never sees the rise of its great generals and dictators. Men like Lucius Cornelius Sulla, Gaius Marius, Gnaeus Pompeius, and Julius Caesar either die in battle or fall short of assuming the dictatorship. Rome's Republic is able to reform itself by restoring senatorial dominance over the masses and remains the leading power of the Mediterranean for the first centuries BC and AD. However, without the military conquests and reforms of the empire's great men, Rome's expansion slows to a crawl, and wars and rebellions such as that of Sertorius in the far west and the rise of Pontus in the far east are unable to be suppressed, allowing for the rise of rival states, who in time might grow to surpass Rome's power. By the 260s, Rome was divided and weakened with usurpers in the northwestern and southwestern provinces. The empire recovered only thanks to massive efforts by two brilliant men who came to occupy the position of emperor, Aurelian and Diocletian. Were these men never to rise to the rank of emperor, Rome's empire was likely to remain decentralized. Overwhelmed by the crisis of the 3rd century, Rome is left unable to reconquer the breakaway Gallic and Palmyrene empires or repel the Gothic invasion of the Balkans. The Goths, after defeating the Romans at the Battle of Thermopylae in 254, would have occupied all of Thrace, Moesia, and Macedonia, establishing within those provinces a kingdom for themselves. Permanently losing nearly three quarters of its land would have significantly decreased Rome's power, but would have also helped Rome remain more centralized thanks to its more compact size. Rome's control over its remaining provinces would be strengthened, allowing it to defend itself more effectively, thus preventing the fall of the empire's western section in the 5th century. Rome permanently loses its breadbasket of North Africa to the Vandals, but is able to repel or endure barbarian invasions in Italia and Dalmatia thanks to the pacification and assimilation of the Ostrogoths as a reliable ally against other barbarian groups. Rome is no longer able to support its overgrown population and both famines and rebellions spread across the empire, but eventually stability resumes and Rome continues on into the modern centuries with its greater Italian border still intact. And now... The true ending, the worst ending, Rome falls. Rome's empire has been completely overrun by barbarians, while the Eastern Empire has broken away as a wholly independent entity, which itself would collapse some centuries later. Italia and Dalmatia would fall entirely under the rule of the Ostrogothic Kingdom, followed by the Lombards, who would ultimately leave Italia disunited and at the mercy of several larger powers for centuries. Inheriting the throne of the East Roman Empire following his uncle's brief rule, Justinian the Great would go on to become one of the most successful of the Byzantine emperors. Over the course of four decades, he with the help of his trusted general Belisarius, managed to recover and reunite a significant portion of lost Roman lands and permanently bring them under the East Roman banner, even despite the riots and plagues which beset him on the home front at the time of conquest. This marked the beginning of a new age of prosperity, as the Mediterranean now returned fully to Roman control, providing not only bountiful lands from which to extract resources from, but a secure medium through which to transport those resources to the new capital region in the east. Having faced unrelenting assaults on their borders for centuries, the Byzantines are defeated and overrun by the Turks, whose sultan proclaims himself as the Roman Emperor and declares his intent on reuniting the empire. In 1480, the campaign to conquer Italy would begin, siphoning resources away from other expansion efforts. The Sultanate of Rome would exist in a constant struggle for dominance with the Holy Roman Empire of Europe, seeing land in Italy constantly shift between the two. Emperor Augustus, foreseeing a future drop in the quantity of slave labor, authorizes Roman engineers to begin experimenting with means of automation while incentives are offered for anyone who could devise means of simplifying the production and transportation of goods within the empire. As the decades advance, more and more developments are made, propelling Rome into an industrial age, which would in turn enrich the empire, allowing it to advance even farther.
Emperor Caligula sets out to transform Rome into a mighty naval power, and authorizes the construction of several massive ships to explore the Atlantic for new lands to settle and conquer. Word returns of a new continent far to the west, and without any rivals to challenge their claims, Roman colonization of the New World begins, expanding out from the Caribbean and the northeast coast. Rome settles its greatest issues during the reign of the early emperors, preventing the spiraling decline that the empire faced in its upper leadership, which caused further instability as the years progressed. Although the empire eventually divides, relations between the east and west remain largely cooperative and never devolve into hostility. Both halves of the empire take up the goal of exploration beyond their borders, but for two largely differing reasons. The west seeks conquest and glory, new lands to settle in the name of the great empire, while the east seeks enrichment and discovery, establishing small port colonies and collecting new resources and materials from far off lands. The US of Z thanks for watching, big thanks to Bulgarian Empire Mapping for helping with today's video. Let us know what you'd like to see us cover in the comments below, support your legion by liking the video, or join our ranks by subscribing for more. Mr. Z, out.